Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi and today we're going to be studying the Norma Lateralis. What is the Norma Lateralis? Now we all know that your skull can be viewed in different, different relations. For instance, if we view it anteriorly, it's Norma Frontalis. If we view it from the above, it's known as the Norma Verticalis. Posteriorly is the Occipitalis, below is the Basalis. And if we talk about laterally, it is known as a Norma Lateralis. And that is what we're going to be studying uh, for today. So before I get started, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get started first thing we talk about is the bones that are involved in this view right i'm going to take this skull because some things are clearer in this skull see that the important bones are you know that this is the parietal bone that comes from above from the norma verticalis it comes in this view and then the frontal bone that is coming from the frontalis view it's also joined in the lateralis view and then there is this bone right here this sphenoid bone so you can even see it from uh, the cranial cavity it's the same bone that we studied all right and then we have the most important bone of the norma lateralis this is the temporal bone and posteriorly we have a little bit of occipitalis joining uh, to form the norma lateralis right so these are the bones that are involved in it let's get started with the features of the norma lateralis let me just tell you some basic features so in the temporal bone i want you to remember that the temporal bone is consisting of parts just like we talked about in the occipital bone the temporal bone has the squamous part, the most largest part of the temporal bone. Then there's this tiny mastoid part of the bone in which the mastoid process, this projection can be seen right behind the external acoustic meatus. We have this tympanic part of the uh, temporal uh, bone which is more visible in this skull right here therefore i got like two skulls so you can see that this projecting area this this is the tympanic plate which is projecting downwards from the temporal bone this is also a part of the temporal bone and finally we all know there is one more part to the temporal bone that we talked about in the cranial cavity which is petrous part of the temporal bone but that's not for the normal lateralis thankfully now let's go ahead and talk about other features we can see is you can see this is the zygomatic arch so guys there's this huge difference i want to uh, talk to you about it's this zygomatic bone is actually the cheekbone. Do not confuse it with the zygomatic arch. Zygomatic uh, bone is the cheekbone. Zygomatic arch is this structure on the normal lateralis. You can, as you can see it's away from the skull. So it's found over here in the normal lateralis separated from the skull. And this is formed by two bones. One bone is the, temp since the temporal bone is giving a hand like projection. So this is known as the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So the posterior two third of the zygomatic arch is formed by the, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and the anterior one third of the arch is formed by the, this is the zygomatic bone. It is giving a hand like projection towards the temporal bone. It is called the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. So this is what is forming the zygomatic arch. So there's a difference between zygomatic arch and bone. Make sure you keep that in mind. Then we have the temporal lines. They're like temporal lines uh, which are not visible in the skull, but always remember just above the temporal bone, there are two lines that are running. One goes like that and the other goes like that. All right, so suppose this is like the front side of the face, right, anterior. So the superior temporal line and the inferior temporal line, there are two temporal lines. Superior temporal line, posteriorly it disappears, whereas the inferior temporal line becomes continuous with the supramastoid crest. Is this crest right here um, leading to your zygomatic arch. So the te inferior temporal line comes all the way here and when it goes posteriorly, you can actually see a little bit of impression of the inferior temporal line. It is joining with this supramastoid crest, supramastoid meaning above the mastoid supramastoid crest which is joining with the root of the zygomatic arts so with that comes our topic of the zygomatic arts and the zygomatic arch i've already talked about it's formed anterior one third and posterior two thirds which bones are forming uh, now let's talk about some of the borders you can see there's an upper border to this a uh, lower border to this zygomatic arch i think the upper border of the zygomatic arch and its anterior end right here is known as a juggle point and in the lower border of the zygomatic arch, posteriorly, this tubercle exists. It is known as the articular tubercle. Why is it the articular? Wherever you hear the word articular, it means some joint is being involved. We all know that the mandible is supposed to come and attach over here. You can see right here. Therefore, there's some articulation taking place right around over here. So this is known as articular tubercle. And just below the articular below and behind it posterior to it you can see there's this fossa right here it's known as the mandibular or articular fossa obviously because your mandible's head is gonna come and sit right here and just behind this fossa this tiny projection tubercle here is known as a post plenoid tubercle so zygomatic arch has two roots there is an anterior root and a posterior root you can see in the posterior root is continuous with the supramastoid crest and this articular tubercle is lying at the junction of these two like just between these two 
this entire arch is separated from the skull by this uh, area you can see right here so what passes through this area is important it is the we all know that the temporal bone basically has this attachment to the temporal muscle of the chewing muscle right so temporalis is attached over here so it's tendon the temporalis tendon goes through this along with that the deep temporal nerves and depo deep temporal vessels also pass through this area and uh, another thing about this arch is that there is suture is visible between the zygomatic and temporal bone so it's known as a zygomatico temporal suture it runs downwards and backwards see on this side you can see right here with the black pen it's this is the zygomatico temporal suture the external acoustic meatus now this is an interesting part because the external acoustic meatus is lying in within the temporal bone let's suppose this is the external acoustic meatus i've enlarged it uh, it has an anterior boundary posterior boundary above boundary and a lower boundary all right superior and inferior the anterior lower and some part of the posterior is formed by the mastoid part of your temporal bone like this part right here and the postero superior what is left this this postero and superior boundary some part of posterior some part of superior boundary is formed by what lies above is the squamous part of the temporal bone this meatus is basically the opening of your ear you can literally feel it right now it's open right it's just above the mastoid process lies this triangle known as supra meatal triangle right about here if i draw a line it's like that that and that so how is it bounded the supra meatal uh, triangle is bounded by above by this crest right here this is the supra mastoid crest is forming the above boundary anteriorly this triangle is bounded by this postero superior margin of the external acoustic meatus and posteriorly the margin is a tangent passing through the posterior margin of the external acoustic meatus so if this is that tangent this is forming the posterior boundary above there is a supra mastoid crest antero superior boundary of this meatus so you can see this triangle is being formed very tiny triangle the significance of this is that this beneath this lies your tympanic mastoid antrum which so this is the lateral wall of that antrum let's talk about the mastoid part of the temporal bone a little bit so the mastoid part is going to be connected to three bones all right first is the squamous part of the temporal bone at the squamo mastoid suture this is joining your mastoid and squamous part of your temporal bone right and then there is this suture you can see right here very obvious it's joining with the parietal bone so this is the parieto mastoid suture and finally most posteriorly this is the occipito mastoid suture because it's joining the occipital with the mastoid temporal bone this occipito mastoid suture over here you'll see a foramen known as the mastoid foramen uh this is lying either at or near this occipito mastoid suture it transmits your emissary vein which is connecting your sigmoid sinus to the posterior auricular vein and along with that it also transmits the meningeal branch of the occipital artery so the contents of the foramens do not forget that they are something you should always memorize another important part is the uh just anterior aspect of the mastoid process beneath you'll see this part known as the tympano mastoid fissure it is responsible for transmitting an auricular branch of the vagus nerve so th there is this important point over here right over here you can see there are three sutures that are meeting this is the occipito mastoid the parieto mastoid and finally this suture coming from the norma verticalis we remember the lambdoid suture these meet at this point this is known as the asterion a for asterion and this is the point where in the infants it has a fontanelle it's open uh we've already talked about fontanelles in norma verticalis so uh this is usually open and it closes by one year of age and entero medial to the uh mastoid process you'll see a projection this is although it's a part of the norma bizalis but you should know that it is known as a styloid process it's directed downwards medially and forwards all right it's lying on both sides and just in front you can see this is the tympanic plate also projecting downwards this is the area of the temporal fossa the temporal fossa is basically bounded above by the superior temporal line below by the zygomatic arch so you can see this area right here this is the temporal fossa and just below it is going to be the infratemporal fossa so the temporal fossa what's its floor consists of a very important point known as the terion it's an h shaped suture right here this point terion in which four bones are meeting each other which which bones are these this is the frontal bone there is this parietal bone 
Then there is this sphenoid bone and finally your temporal bone. When they adjoin in this area, the stereon area is formed. Why is it so specific and named? Because this is the thin part of the skull. Just deep to the terion right here lies your middle meningeal arteries anterior division. So basically the middle meningeal artery along with that some meningeal vein, middle meningeal vein is lying and the stem of lateral sulcus of brain. Just remember the contents that lie deep to it. But what's important is that that interior division of the middle meningeal artery is prone to damage in road traffic accidents since this is a thin part of a bone this is a clinical when this gets damaged the artery the lying beneath this is the middle meningeal artery gets damaged which causes hemorrhage extra dural hemorrhage right over here and due to that hemorrhage there's compression to the brain obviously and when there's compression of the brain of this side usually the opposite side of your body is affected undergoes paralysis right the only solution to this is taking out that clot of blood so guys these were all the important points of the normal lateral I really hope you understood the video well uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching